For those who don't know, um, I am Brian. I'm the head of content and marketing at Santiment. I post all those little fun uh, updates about the markets on our social media that some of you may follow on at Santiment feed. Um, I also do a lot of videos like this and catch up with all sorts of people in the crypto space. So uh, certainly there's there's a ton to talk about here. And I think, you know, we didn't we didn't vet the topics ahead of time, you guys and myself, but I think we can kind of go through some of the things that we are seeing here at Santiment. And maybe you guys can just chime in freely, let us know what um, you guys are, are checking out, what you might want to know more about in terms of metric data, yeah. and we will dive in accordingly, okay? Yeah, that was the plan. That was by intent, because I know that you, uh, and by the way, Brian does, uh, they are doing their own X lives and video um, spaces and stuff like that too. And I mean, I see them kind of going on. I try to tune in when I can. I would love if you could, if you have the opportunity to maybe share a screen and, and walk through some of the stuff that you're looking at uh, while you load it up. I mean, I think one of the things that's interesting in this space is that we do see kind of statistics that seem to be um, omitted at certain uh, times. And I think, you know, Brian and his team at Santiment are one of the entities that do a really good job at showcasing, like, as long as they have the data feeds and everything else, like what's actually existing. Like I can think, for example, developer analytics um, and the work that you guys are doing to kind of showcase active development on these networks and comparing them to other networks. And I will stop rambling, though, Brian, and let you kind of take over here and uh, tell us what we're looking at. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there are there are so many things that we can dive into on a daily basis, whether the markets have been flat and boring like they kind of have been for the past few months or whether they're really starting to break out like they have in the past 24 hours. Uh, it's not typical for us to just see a sea of green like this, right? Usually there's at least, you know, a handful of, of assets that are in the red and that's just not the case right now. We're, we're seeing a huge reaction to the Fed rate cuts that occurred just under 24 hours ago. Obviously, for those of you in the stock market, you're seeing a huge day there. NASDAQ especially is having a huge day, up almost 3%. Uh, last I checked a few minutes ago. And uh, altcoins have been the ones that are breaking out. Uh, it's, you know, at Santimit, we talk a lot about how the markets tend to move the opposite direction of the crowd's expectation at all times, right? So if some big bullish event like the Bitcoin halving happens like it did earlier this year. Everybody starts to say, OK, time to buy, time for Bitcoin to roll. And then everyone gets shocked when Bitcoin retraces for the next two weeks. And then after those two weeks pass, everyone's like, well, the halving was a big scam. I got wamboozled. I'm heading out of crypto, done with this. And then when that happens, that moment of just a wee bit of capitulation, that's when markets start to bounce and recover and roar, right? So yesterday, when there were rate cuts, we saw this initial positive reaction from the retail traders saying, all right, rates were cut. This was expected. Uh, crypto is going to boom just like the markets. And then as soon as the crowd starts to uh, take get wind of, of that news, the markets suddenly top and we actually see markets go way down. Um, Technically, Bitcoin was the one that underperformed a ton uh, in those initial few hours after the news was released. And altcoins actually started to sneak up and break out all over the place. But people had their eyes on Bitcoin, so they weren't worrying about all of these obscure alts that have been underperforming and losing people money over the past few months. So people started saying, all right, I'm, I'm just going to chill and, and wait for markets to look a little bit better. And then at least here in the U.S., while we slept, that's when markets really started to erupt. Uh, and people like myself, and I'm sure you guys as well, woke up to just huge, huge roaring prices. Um, you know, BitTensor especially up 21% the past 24 hours. Celestia up 23%. You can see social volume for Bitcoin is at a, a big increase naturally as Bitcoin surpassed 60K for the first time in a couple of weeks. And we see that, uh, you know, rate cuts are just causing huge spikes in conversations all over the place. 
Over the past seven days, same thing. We see Celestia up over 51%. Bitcoin's up about 10% in the past week now. So lots to talk about. Volume, by the way, in all of crypto, up 63% in the past week compared to the week prior. So trading has suddenly taken off. And many people might say, well, this is automatically bullish. That's not always the case. Uh, I think in this case, we're seeing just a ton of retail and institutional money coming into crypto on the news of these uh, the 50 BPS rate cuts for the first time uh, since March 15th, 2020, when there was then an emergency uh, FOMC meeting to cut rates and combat the, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak. So much different circumstances compared to back then. But if we do have to compare, uh, for those who had the cojones to jump in and buy Bitcoin, uh, as it was then at as low as 3.6K, believe it or not, uh, you were pretty handsomely rewarded throughout the rest of 2020. So I'm not going to say that a rate cut is an automatic golden ticket to, to earn free money as long as you long crypto. But historically, given enough time playing out, it has generally resulted in a favorable crypto market. I'll stop there for a minute and take a sip and, and maybe you guys have a follow up or two. If not, I've got plenty of other topics. No, we do, Darren. I'm sure I'm a, I'm curious if you do. If not, I've got something. But yeah, I uh, wanted to know a little bit more about the rate cuts and like, yeah, a, a C19 certainly makes sense. But I, I was under the impression that as the Fed cuts rates, like usually like it's because some type of catastrophe is in is unfolding and they, they uh, you know, cut rates. And this time there there seemed to be a little bit more proactive so i'm wondering if uh, they could kind of prevent some type of catastrophe by throwing money at the problem yeah it's a complicated subject uh i think for a lot of people they were expecting uh these rate cuts to happen almost or even a full year ago when uh we really were starting to see signs of inflation that's generally the main reason that, that rates are cut um, I think, you know, obviously we've been seeing all time highs uh, with the S&P 500. They, the Fed doesn't care about crypto. They care about how, uh, you know, markets are looking and how inflation is looking and making sure that the average Joe in the U.S. is able to live. Right. And uh, even though markets have been roaring and corporations are having a great time right now, uh, individuals are not. And with inflation being the primary topic for the Fed, pretty much since I'd say 20, the beginning of 2022, when we started to see that huge uh, retrace from the then November 2021 all-time high in crypto, uh, there's been a, a constant push and pull as to when the Fed should pull the trigger on these rate cuts and, and how aggressive they should be on them. Uh, I think 2022 was such a surprise with markets going down that the Fed didn't want to touch things for a while. 2023 was a big recovery. And then 24 was kind of all over the place. Uh, even though stock markets have been surging, uh, I think it was just trying to find the right time. And uh, as far as I know, they they a lot of people seem to believe that the Fed caved into public pressure. The public wanted this and the Fed was kind of resisting until the time was right. Uh, I can actually pull up the amount of mentions related to inflation so you can see how much of a topic it's been over the last couple of years. Let's do a little two year span here. Actually, we'll make it one year because there was an API change on Twitter back in July of 23. <laughs> So you can see when inflation becomes a concern, there actually tends to be a lot of tops. So the three biggest spikes on this chart here, right here in mid-February, we had a slight top. Then we had the literal all-time high where inflation was one of the most prominent topics in uh, the crypto world right at that all-time high. And then one more as crypto is attempting to rebound and make a new all-time high. And then we see a big local top and then it's been ranging ever since. But you'll notice 
a lot of these big spikes correlate with the top. It's a, a huge fear marker uh, and, and something that's always on people's minds, uh, especially people who are still licking their wounds from the losses that were taken back in 22. I'm curious, Brian, um, you know, this is like kind of just a sidebar question, but um, I know that you guys have a big focus on kind of analytics surrounding sentiment, obviously. Mm -hmm. So like one thing that I think is at least it appears to, to have kind of been the case is that over the past, like different cycles have kind of different things and different narratives that seem to drive markets and like, when we talk about like real world adoption of, of blockchain and crypto, um, Darren and I have talked about this before. It seems like there's more real world adoption related news than there ever has been in 2024. And it doesn't seem like it really matters to an extent where if in like 20, I don't know, 2018 or 2020, any one of the, the announcements that we see on, on an almost weekly basis would have like... <laughs> made mountains move like three or four years ago. Like, is that a correct assumption from an outsider standpoint or your, is your data showing something totally different? Yeah, it's a complex question, right? The first thing I think of when I hear the question of how mass adopted has Bitcoin or crypto become, I like to look at the actual amount of non-empty wallets, right? It seems logical that if we're starting to see more and more adoption toward Bitcoin, we're naturally seeing more and more actual wallets, not just wallets that exist or have existed ever, but wallets that actually currently hold Bitcoin, right? Because those are those are people who actually find there to be value in the currency and, and the ability tr to transact and, and use it as an alternative or digital gold, as some people like to call it, to, to exchange uh, real life fiat or currency. So in this case, if we look at the last year, yeah, there's been a huge uptick in the amount of non-empty wallets. If we go back to, let's say, October 20th or 19th, there's been an increase of about 11% in the amount of non-empty wallets. It's up to 5.37 million now versus, uh, excuse me, four, 49 million then versus 54.3 million now. Since mid-June, it's actually gone down though. Um, and you may think that's a bad thing, I've actually seen the trend where these wallets moving down usually is indicative of small retail traders liquidating their wallets because they're they're either bored or frustrated or fearful of holding on to their crypto because they're they're assuming it might lose value. The when when things are moving up, it's actually a sign of FOMO and can lead to tops. So we actually want to see at least for short periods of time, short bursts, these amount of wallets moving down, because that's usually when we see huge, huge surges like this. This was a primary example in mid-January all the way to late February. So right now, yeah, we're seeing plenty of, of increasing in the overall amount of non-empty wallets. I think that, you know, anecdotally, just seeing all over our, our X feed or Twitter feed, as I still like to call it, uh, Lots and lots of, of new cases for Bitcoin and crypto in general are coming out all the time. Uh, and that is objectively a good thing for those of us who are in crypto and want to see the industry grow. Ideally, we continue to see growth among many of the top caps in crypto, uh, specifically related to the amount of non-empty wallets going on. Darren, I don't know if you have anything. I've got follow up too. I, I, he was saying that he had other stuff. So um, if you have a follow up, go ahead. Yeah, I think just briefly, Brian, I mean, I think one of the things is like, you know, we're sitting here on, I, I still call it Twitter, um, but we're sitting here on Twitter and like, uh, supposedly the bots are gone, but obviously they're not. So like, I, I think when you are pulling and you mentioned using like the X API, right? Um, mm -hmm. When you're pulling data from the X API and, and measuring trending topics and all this other stuff i'm sure some of it's proprietary but like i'm i'm assuming you do some sort of a filtering aspect out like with stuff that is just totally botted out for for words or whatever it is right yeah okay. slightly uh, there's there's only so much we can control right because there are 
so many clever people out there that are making indistinguishable bots every day and we can only keep up with them uh once they start to show a theme and they're they're repetitive on uh, some sort of auto response to whatever we post on twitter you know any any account that's i'd say 25k followers or more like these these bots or people making the bots or targeting them to put auto responses to to try to fake people out with a fictitious airdrop or something like that um but yeah in i have noticed throughout 2024 the amount of bots have have certainly decreased i used to put out a post and i'd have to delete and block like seven accounts that instantly responded with like some shill to their website or their you know fake wallet or fake airdrop whatever um, so it's getting better, but it's never going to be perfect. And if some someone out there says that they have found the perfect solution, give me their number right away because we'd love to know how to uh, implement that, our, that ourselves. Uh, that being said, it is more or less going to get more and more accurate as Musk and Co. do a better job of getting rid of the bot problem that we've all experienced. Um, so this social volume is going to be quite accurate. And we've seen many instances where the uh, social volume of keywords is just tremendously useful. I pulled up this chart, which shows three different colors here. I know it looks very noisy, but I'll explain. Any round number between 50K to 59K is represented in blue. Any round number between 60 to 69K is represented in red. Any round number between 70 to 79K is represented in yellow. These numbers matter because people are almost exclusively referring to these numbers in relation to Bitcoin's price. Um, yeah, there's exceptions. Maybe someone's talking about some other miscellaneous topic, but we call maybe 95% of these number mentions on X or even other platforms are going to be related to Bitcoin's price. When we see big spikes in blue like this, it's usually an indication that we're getting close to a bottom because while we're in this 55 to 65K range, if people are talking about the 50Ks, that means they're predicting that prices are gonna go lower. And when we see that happen, you can see very clearly these three biggest spikes all happened right, even four biggest spikes actually, they all happened right when markets bottomed and then we shot up. So if you're a contrarian, which you should be, uh, because you don't want to be following the crowd. You want to be following what the whales are doing, which I can get to in a moment. But 50 to 59K mention spikes here are very, very solid alpha signals for when we're about to bounce. And it's not always because we're actually hitting the 50Ks. If we're in the 60Ks and someone suddenly says, or, or you see a, a big uptick in uh, Bitcoin's going to 50K because X, Y, Z, Great sign that we're about to hit a bottom. The crowd's getting overly fearful and you can buy. Alternatively, 70 to 79K, look at how much these have corresponded with tops. If you see that green faint line in the background, they almost all precisely line up with the exact time that Bitcoin started to turn and go downward. So you don't want to be rooting for a lot of people talking about these high values you want to be rooting for people talking about the low ones and being fearful and scared and liquidating their wallets while the whales continue to scoop them up. Do you think, I know you're going to get into um, whale wallets here, but do you think that some of the big accounts that start posting about 50K are actually not considering that Bitcoin is going to go to 50K and like kind of counter trading the, the, the market? Yeah, I mean, I'm a numbers guy. I won't give an exact percentage of how many people are exaggerating or even giving their opposite opinion to what they actually believe. Um, but I believe it's probably somewhere in the 25 to 45% range. I think a lot of people try to manipulate their audience with, um, you know, euphoric sentiment when they're actually selling and overly fearful sentiment when they're actually buying uh you know jim kramer is the big man big meme where uh, he just spouts very emotional reactions to whatever the prices are currently doing because it's easy and popular when prices are going to go down to just say prices are going to continue to go down guys better get out while you can right 
you look like yeah. a genius if you're, you know, following the narrative of the way prices have already gone, right? Like if the if the Dallas Cowboys win three in a row, no one's going to crit- criticize you for being a bad sports an- analyst for saying they're about to win their fourth game in a row. But if you're a contrarian and you're actually going to be like, this is the game where that streak ends, people are going to be like, what's he talking about? They just won three in a row. They're looking so good right now. So you see a lot of people just following the trend. And then once the crowd really starts to buy into that trend, the whales just say, all right, time to pump or time to dump. And uh, it's it's like clockwork. We've seen it for years and years now. Darren and I have talked about this, um, and especially – I would say 2022 time frame. I can remember, I forget what Bitcoin went down to. Maybe it was 16 or 17. Maybe it was, I forget. But anyways, we were talking about like, everybody was talking about everything going way lower and how difficult it is to, when it seems like it would be the most painful, get into the market or how difficult it is when it seems like it's the dumbest decision in the world to start scaling out or get out of the market. Like, But I think what, you know, when you put sentiment and you overlay it on top of charts, it doesn't become as difficult of a mental, I would imagine, I'm curious, like from your cust, like the customer base that you have through sentiment and everything else, like it almost becomes like, okay, this is literally right in front of me telling me that my sentiment doesn't matter. Um, and, you know, overlaying like actual charts and, and history on top of it probably makes those uh, mind boggling decisions that seem impossible at bottoms and tops a little bit easier. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I think looking at the sentiment of millions of people gives you a whole lot better perspective than the 13 people in your private trading group that you went to high school with. And uh, I, I think most people know that, but it's easier said than done to actually look into big numbers that that actually scale to the level that sentiment can. And I, I think a lot of people just don't know about how powerful this is, no matter how much we spout it on on X, people might think it's too long of a read or it's too much to track on a daily basis or just not fun, right? Some people don't want to look at sentiment when it's, especially when things are miserable and people are, are trying to find out when the average Joe is in a lot of pain. That's not always a fun experience. People want to just think about the Lambos and the, and the going to the moon narratives that are out there. Uh, but if you're disciplined and you're really trying to make the money, uh, you're checking it on a daily basis. And while you were talking, I pulled up my favorite sentiment chart. This is something I check every single day when I'm trying to find things to post about. And this is showing the ratio of positive versus negative sentiment posts at any given time. We have an algorithm that kind of can distinguish whether someone is, is, bullish or bearish just by certain phrasing of their words. Uh, Plenty of neutral posts out there wouldn't be included in this, but if someone says I'm bullish or I'm selling or uh, it's time to buy, these types of things are going to be calculated and we can actually put it into a ratio regardless of how much chatter or how little chatter there is at any time of day or any time of year. This is just showing the overall ratio of how bullish or bearish people are. And there are two times over the past three months where we've actually seen more negative sentiment than positive sentiment. It was precisely at the bottom on July 4th. Uh, I believe this was one either one day before or one day after the Trump assassination attempt. One of you may remember, but regardless, this was right when everyone was capitulating and saying, all right, Bitcoin is down at 53K. I am not a believer that we're going to get back to that all-time high anytime soon. And then all of a sudden, we see this huge eruption. No, it didn't quite get to that all-time high, but it got pretty damn close, right? And then look, we see this huge positive sentiment spike just about three weeks later. And that you had about 24 hours to react to that and get out right before this huge collapse. Then we see a huge collapse and the second time happens that we see more negative sentiment than positive sentiment and then prices erupt again. So uh, literally the three most extremes on this chart were all perfect bottom and top indicators. Uh, Like I'm not, 
I'm not exaggerating this. I didn't, I didn't fluff the numbers in any way. This is just the past three months of this ratio. And it's showing quite clearly that the crowd gets it wrong, so much wrong that they end up being perfect uh, counter indicators to, to sell and buy if you're interested in kind of swing trading. I, I know we're, we have to ramp down in a second with you, Brian, but, and we're definitely going to bring you back on. I wanted to ask you though, like we always hear the phrase, the phrasing, and it doesn't matter if it's from a positive through a positive lens or a negative lens. This time is different. This time is different, you know, everything else. And like, I even remember, I think saying like a couple of weeks ago, I can't remember a time that the markets like, like blockchain in general markets and Twitter seem to be like this dead. But when you think about, is that, I mean, am I totally dead wrong? Because I'm sure that I probably am totally dead wrong, but it seems like you get in your own head and you're like, it hasn't been this dead forever. Were we seeing similar stuff a few years ago and then a few years back from that where it definitely was this dead or, or is this time kind of different? Yeah, I think you're, you're partially right. At least according to the data, there, there has been a big drop off in overall discussion on crypto Twitter and Reddit and various places people just aren't that entertained or interested when bitcoin and crypto goes through this long ranging period and we have to remember even though bitcoin's been up and down for the majority of the year especially since the all-time high most altcoins have been crushed if you're an xrp maxi or a cardano or a chain link whatever it is most assets have actually not done very well uh ever since that march top so a lot of people who jumped in you know, around this time when, you know, we start to see crypto really going mainstream and it's all over the news, most of them are actually down money. And, and that hasn't been a fun experience for people. Um, so with that said, I mean, you can see the social volume just overall toward any topic and it's not declining right now. It was actually, it's most dead back in mid May, but it's been through its, its occasional bursts followed by very, you know, very low enthusiasm. Uh, early September especially was down a lot and it started to pick up. I would imagine if Bitcoin surpasses 65K in the next week or even next few days, we really start to see discussions pick, pick up again as people anticipate and begin to predict when we're going to see a new all-time high. Um, but overall, since 2021, uh, there's there's definitely been a decline. I can't show it because Twitter messed up the API and we can't compare apples to oranges, but it's down significantly. And uh, I think a lot of the reason is COVID's no longer a thing. People aren't stuck at home and there isn't as much discussion on Twitter in general. Uh, and also, I think it's been a frustrating ride for a lot of people throughout 2024. Well, tell us where we can go and uh, follow you and do all the other stuff that we're here. I mean, I know we're on X right now, but um, as we kind of ramp down here and let's definitely bring you on again. I'm, I, we could probably honestly fill a full hour with with having you on as we've done before. And I mean, I would love to be able to do that in the future um, if you were for sure if you have the time. So, yeah, just I don't know why I can't load it. I think it's some extension on my browser right now, but just go to x.com slash Santam and feed. Drop us a follow if you're interested in us giving daily updates on our metrics. And we've got so many things that we update on a daily basis. Uh, you can open up a free trial to Santiment just by going to our app.santiment.net slash pricing page. Just get two weeks free to, to browse around and see all of the metrics that we have been showing in real time. If you like it, great. Grab a Sandbase Pro membership, get a discount. Uh, hit us up on our Discord, which is in our x.com slash sentiment feed bio, and we'll be happy to help you out, hook you up, make sure it's affordable and an enjoyable experience where you're not getting lost in the numbers too much. Um, but, you know, we really appreciate the time, guys. I know we we could have talked about 10 times more topics than we did, but that's what the future calls are for, I think. A hundred percent. We're going to get you back on. Um, we're planning out for... October right now. So I definitely want to have you back on. We're going to go over the whale wallet stuff and everything else. And um, and we're going to be able to do it uh, on video this time instead of just kind of talking about it and walking through it because I think uh, picture uh, says a thousand words. So um, 
Really appreciate your time today, Brian. Uh, everybody go check out Sandsman Feed. I will pull it up uh, real quick here just so you guys can see it. Uh, and yeah, so go give Sandsman a follow. These guys do great work. Again, um, even from the developer statistic, which I'm sure people in like Hedera have seen. And um, I mean, I even know like the ICP and um, Polkadot and all the other you know, networks that are kind of... Uh, surrounding them themselves there pretty consistently but yeah it's honestly a pleasure brian it's always great to uh to catch up and i'm sorry that it's been so long we'll have to 100 percent bring you back on in the near future all good yeah it's i'm i'm sure i've been pretty busy too but i think we can start to roll and, and get consistent calls again and it's always a pleasure hearing from you guys 100 percent. i'm gonna make an intro i i sent you that message so i'll send you uh I'll, I'll, I'll make an intro email here with uh with a network here right after this so perfecto Thanks, Brian. All right, folks. Talk soon.